Thanks for joining everyone. I'm Rob Tietro from RobTietro.com, Portfolio Manager here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management and at the Tietro Wealth Advisor Group. Thanks for joining. Really interesting guest I got on today. Last time he was on, he made a few bold predictions and they pretty much all came true. He wrote a piece last week, about a week and a bit ago. And I, I emailed him when I saw the piece. I said, Javid, I want you back on the show. He's coming back. He's back on on the show. Let's bring him in. Let's delay him no longer. He, a man who doesn't need introduction, but I will introduce him anyways. Uh, Javed Mirza, quantitative technical analyst and researcher from Canaccord Genuity Corporation. Welcome, Javed. Perfect, Rob. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm pulling up a financial services chart here. Yep. I think this one's interesting because of, of the, the how bad it's been for financial services. Um, yeah for a while here. And this yep. is S&P TSX cap financial services index. Yep. This is a June 5th chart. Yep. Um, what, what is, uh, what are we seeing here? So what we're seeing here, uh, in my view, is we've had a pretty big move lower over the last couple of months, of course. From our work, everything that it says in the markets, as long as they hold around current levels over the next couple of months, is that we're starting a new bull cycle. If we are starting a new bull cycle, typically at the start of a new bull cycle, financials do well. So what should happen over the next I, you know, for our work suggests over the course of the next year is that financial services should outperform relative to most of the other sectors in the TSX. So, you know, you've had a pretty big bout of underperformance. And so you should see money flow into these later this summer and to help uh, elevate the, this sector and help it outperform throughout uh, into next year. You look at the multiples, and I know this isn't part of what you do. I, I'm sure it is because you follow it somewhat, but you look at the macro side, just looking at uh, fundamental analysis and some of these financials that are trading at, you know, eight multiples, eight or nine multiples. Yeah. And we know that historically they trade at 12 or 13 or 14 multiples yeah. coupled with, with this technical analysis. Um, you know, I'm sure some portfolio managers would definitely agree with you. There's a healthcare chart. The next one here, I'm going to take you to it. I think it's IT. Oh, sorry. It's IT chart. Yes, that uh, one's an important information one. technology. Yeah. yeah, do you do you mind going through this one with us? Of course. So what we're highlighting, notice the pattern here is you see the blue boxes. Those are effectively sideways consolidations, but notice they happen in between periods where Infotech has a pretty big run. So notice what's happened over since basically the the start of it's 2020. Chart, right? Yeah. So since it's the start of 2020. Yeah. So over the last four or five months, Infotech has been on a massive tear. So anytime it goes on a massive tear, you after that, and that's why we highlighted these blue boxes, is you have this basically sideways trading range. So that's what we're highlighting. And that's what we think is going to happen over the next couple of months is that uh, Infotech will, for the most part, effectively move sideways. You'll see some rotation into some of the more value uh, areas of the market. And these are the ones that have been really beat up by uh, the, the, all the COVID-19, uh, you know, uh, the economic damage. Our work suggests that over the next couple of months, it's effectively going to be a sideways move in Infotech, but it should resume the longer term uptrend in, um, you know, call it September as we get into the fall. But the other key takeaway is this is our favorite sector uh, in the TSX and the S&P 500 to deploy capital. So this is long-term leadership. Long-term leadership. And uh, explain to our viewers why, because it's a disruptor, because... Um... Yeah, it's all, all of the above. It's, you know, we've got this new secular bull market. Uh, it, it's funny because I, I literally was just telling, driving in the car with my son the other day. He was on my phone doing something and I told him, look, when I was your age, what you held in your hand sat sat on my desktop, right? Like just all the things you can do with your phone right now. Rob, when you and I were growing up, we didn't have that kind of, you know, being able to text someone, being able to do some work on your phone. So society as a whole is much more productive than it, than it was 20 plus years ago. And this will just continue. And our work suggests that this secular bull at least has another 10 years of upside driven by- I sold, cell, I sold cell phones as my first job when I, when I moved out. Uh, I was 18 or 19 and I was selling yep. cell phones. And back then, like the, the, the bricks and the bad yeah. phones. And the, <laughs> you could hurt someone with those. Yeah. 
we got the star tax eventually and then i remember when the nokia 3360s came out was oh that my the flip goodness phone? This, was, this was like the long skinnier nokia that could do like two days on a battery right oh. you have to like charge it every four hours and then i remember they, they they came around and they showed us a blackberry and i remember thinking who is ever going to want to send an email from their phone like yeah. are you crazy this yeah. is not gonna work it shows what i know i was dead wrong on that uh, but i did end up um moving a whole bunch of blackberries later on i were, ended up working there probably five years in the saint vital shopping mall here in winnipeg it was such a great experience i learned so much about technology and phones and stuff uh, but i digress it was actually a good time to be selling cell phones too javid yeah. it was uh nobody had a cell phone right it was yeah. like anyways i just showed my age but well, that's uh, so why that's you, why you so love so disruptive te technology right exactly um I want to maybe take a look at maybe one more chart. I was thinking maybe the uh, the lumber one. I know it's yep. might not be relevant, but I think it's kind of neat. Uh, I'm just going to go to page 21 here. Lumber for us in at least in Canada is I mean it's a big part of our industry. So you do have a daily chart here, a nine month daily chart, yep. and then I think you have a weekly chart as well. Yep. So I would take a look at the weekly. So all this is saying is is look we notice what's happened, and you can see this easily on the chart. Is you held at important support around 250. So first you stalled, take a look what happened back in February. You had a pretty big run. Uh, you went to 460, you stalled right at that 460 resistance, resistance level. And then you faltered, you broke through 380, you went through 300, but you held at 250. And now you're rallying and you've come right back to that 380 level. This is a good point for a, a pause or pullback to take hold. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you can see the commercial hedger positioning at the bottom there. And what you can see there is that over the last couple of weeks, if they've started to reduce exposure and the hedge funds have started to get long. So this suggests that there's a, likely a pause or consolidation that's on the horizon. I think in the near term, you could probably get a pop maybe all the way to 415 over the next couple of weeks. So remember, we think there's gonna be one more uh, rally coming in equity markets and in the market Markets, financial markets in general but I think at that point you're likely to see heavy selling by the smart money and I think that will be once you start to see a, a really bigger summer correction take hold so uh, you guys have heard it here and there's a couple things I'm gonna be able to quote you on next time you're on the show yep. so I'm excited about that uh, a, cons a, a bit of a rally here that would last about two weeks I think is what your work indicates yeah, or, one or to I two weeks yeah one to two weeks a rally and then choppiness into July and August yeah I think um, the probably 10 to 15 percent downside from where we hit the highs over the next couple of weeks 10 to 15 percent from where we hit the highs over the next couple of weeks is yep. kind of the new uh, will be the new support after that kind of yep. roughly yep. um and when you say markets do you think more like the s p 500 or the tsx or you see them yeah, as a so, whole or uh, yeah so typically the market that we monitor and follow or the benchmark is the s p 500 and the tsx follows like all global markets are going to follow the s p 500 to some extent so the tsx because it's got a big resource weighting it's a bit different so when resources are weak it's going to underperform which is what's going on now but when resource resources are strong it's going to outperform the s p 500 so basically the TSX is going to underperform uh, the, the S&P 500 on the move higher. That's what's likely to happen. But um, especially, you know, if, if our views are right here on some of these commodities, it might underperform on the way down as well. And then choppiness, 10 to 15% move down throughout July into July, August. July, August. Yeah, that's a bit harder to see exactly, like when exactly that move will end. But you get my weekly notes every Sunday. Yeah. I'll always try to keep you on top of, uh, of that and try to help you and your clients find better entry points um, for what we see is going to be a, a rally to new all-time highs into the New all-time highs in 2020. Yeah. And then continuation of a secular bull market. Bull. Yep. So next year should be a, a, a good year. And then maybe in 2022, 2023 is when we see the next cyclical correction, similar to what we saw over the last, uh, I would say, if you recall, from October to December 18. of 2018. Exactly. 18. Yep. Yeah. So 18 plus four years. Yep. Generally. So until late 2022. Yep, exactly. That's when we think it'll happen. I like it. I like it. Those are precise numbers by a precise guy.